Hi guys, and today we're here again with another 2018 Toyota Camry. But this isn't your regular Camry, this is the hybrid version. Now, I'm not going to do the normal uh, walk around review that we do looking at the boot, the rear, etc. etc. because uh, we've already reviewed this car and I've also actually run a long termer uh, of the 2018 car. Uh, and so you can see both of those are links I'll put down or somewhere around this video you'll find the links of those. So there's no point in doing that. This is actually our first opportunity to drive the hybrid version which is now on sale in the UA priced at 133,000 dirhams. Now I can tell you that it's it's got a 2.5 liter petrol engine. Now that engine actually gives you 176 brake horsepower and 163 pounds foot of torque. It combines with an electric motor that gives you 118 brake horsepower and 149 pounds foot of torque. Combined, they work it out to be the equivalent of 208 brake horsepower. It gives you a zero to 100 time of just under eight seconds and a top speed of 187 kilometers per hour. Of course, of more interest is the fact that the fuel economy, a combined fuel economy figure, is rated as just 4.5 liter per 100 kilometer, which is remarkable, and emissions is down to 90 grams per kilometer for CO2. I'll go into a little bit, actually, I won't. What I was thinking was that obviously the best way to talk about this car is to take it for a drive. But with hybrids, I always feel that they actually give you the best of both worlds. They give you, you know, all the fun of a petrol car and then allow you to be environmentally conscientious by giving you all the benefits of a low uh, fuel consuming, low fuel consuming and low emission car. So what I'll do is I'll invite my two alter egos to come and do those drives for you and give you the impressions from their distinct point of views. I think we'll start with green. Right then, let's take it for uh, a little bit of a drive. Now, the wonderful thing, of course, about these cars is that, like, as in right now, it's in electric mode. It's completely silent. Actually, the engine just came on then. But the uh, car's been standing around using up the uh, power for the AC and cooling, so therefore, battery's not as charged as I would like. But I've been driving this around town for the last few days, regularly driving around town, not like trying to save fuel, but driving it quite normally. Um, and quite boisterously, actually, if you like, I've been pushing it around a little bit because, you know, as my, uh, my other alter ego will, uh, will testify, you can do that. And I got an overall figure of about 8.6 uh, liters per 100. Then I drove it up to Fujera here today. Uh, it's about 100 kilometers away, so I'd, and, and I must say this is a brand new car. I had about 22 kilometers on it when I picked it up. So the engine's still a little bit tight, and the temperature at the moment is very hot. In fact, driving here, I saw 50 degrees centigrade on the, the instrument panel. So I drove it here and uh, got the economy down to 7.4 liters per 100. And if you actually, I won't show you now because it just re it resets itself every time you start it up. But I do like the way the energy bar just sort of shows you uh, whether it's using the battery, whether it's using the engine, whether it's recharging the battery, etc., etc. It also shows you on the dashboard, it shows you two bars. At the top, there's a white bar. At the bottom, there's a blue bar. The blue bar is a total uh, fuel economy. And the top one is a trip fuel economy. So that tells you what you've done since you started up. So by the time I got to Fujera, that was well below. So it's calibrated in tens with a halfway mark in the middle. And it was way below that halfway mark, which is to suggest that it was well under five. And to me, I would estimate it looked like 4.5, which is actually the liters per hundred combined figure given by Toyota for this car. So that's actually really remarkable. As you can hear, it's really quiet, really refined. This is a CVT gearbox because that's obviously the most efficient. But I gotta say that it is one of the best CVT gearbox. The Toyota Lexus gearbox is one of the best ones out there because really they're completely unobtrusive. They don't do that whole droney thing and they seem to behave like, you know, like automatic gearboxes where they have step changes and stuff like that. Anyway, so get that, getting that sort of fuel economy, uh, a couple of things I want to talk about. For example, the the other car, if you say if you compare it like for like, you're comparing this for to a 2.5 liter petrol uh, Toyota Camry. Now that one gives you a fuel economy figure of 7.4 liters per hundred kilometer. 7.4 liters versus 4.5 liters. So just think about that for a minute. And let me just throw in another figure. Now, I know you lot really don't care about emissions and stuff because we're not taxated on that, but I think you might care after I just tell you these figures. That car produces 194 uh, grams per kilometer of CO2 emissions. 
this car, as my other uh, first presenter, first alter ego said, does 90 grams per kilometer um, CO2 emissions. Now, I worked it out that, say you do an average, average mileage in the UAE is about 25,000 kilometers a year. So say you're doing 25,000 kilometers a year. I worked it out. If you're doing that much, then compared to the, the petrol car, with this car, you are saving 2.87 tons, tons of CO2 emissions. Nearly three tons of CO2 emissions. Just try and picture that in your head. That's air we're talking about. That's emissions that we're talking about. Come out of your exhaust pipe. Tons. In a year, you produce three tons of harmful emissions. That is extraordinary. And for your pockets, I will say, uh, what I was going to say before, is that you've saved 40% on fuel. 40% less fuel, as well as obviously over 100 uh, grams per kilometer less emissions, which is why you've saved three tons of uh, emissions a year. Now, I want to add to that another figure. So as you know, the previous generation of the Toyota Camry Hybrid, which has not been available to sale to us, but has been here in the UAE driving around on taxi fleets. And they've worked it out that over 11 million kilometers that they've done, they've saved, in this, this is in the UAE alone, 6,000 tons of CO2 emissions. 6,000 tons of CO2 emission has been saved by those hybrid Camrys. And this contributes to a global a global number of 90 million tons of CO2 from nearly 12 million Toyota, that's not just Camrys of course, but 20, uh, 11, uh, sorry, 12 million Toyota hybrid vehicles that are in the market, uh, around the world, are on the roads, and they have saved 90 million tons of CO2. So you gotta say, really, hybrids uh, and because driving a hybrid, now this is the other thing, I can be environmentally friendly with those low emissions, I can save a ton of fuel, and yet I've got the AC is cooling me absolutely fine. In fact, the AC, as you know, in Camrys is really powerful, and this one's no different. I have to keep turning it up because it gets too cold. And uh, supremely comfortable, got all my electric gizmos, had the stereo running and everything like that. No compromises to make. This is the thing with a hybrid car. No compromises. I drive this like a completely normal car. I don't have to change my lifestyle. I don't have to worry about recharging it or anything like that. Completely normal driving patterns. And yet, I am contributing to saving the environment and I'm saving money as well. I don't know what my red-shirted Alta Ego is going to say after me, but you know what? Top that. Well... Well done, my friend in uh, green shirt. It's time for me to take over. And I'll tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to drive it in eco mode, which is what he left it in. I'm going to put it into sport mode. There you go. Straight away, the response is there. Man, the acceleration is actually really good. In fact, I think that combination of the petrol engine and the electric motor, uh, I found even around town that off the line, and even now, almost like, well, I say in any gear, and obviously we know it's a CVT, but there's always acceleration available, as you can see, and very, very quickly, like almost as soon as you need it, it's there. Um, yes, the CVT is really good, and yes, it probably is one of the best ones out there, like my uh, green friend was saying, uh, but as a sporty car, yeah, you do still get, when you really start to push it, you do still get some of that droniness, but it's compensated by the fact that the response is so good. So I'll give it that, I'll give it that, because every time I do that, it's there, it's straight away. It's sort of like, the, it pulls the elastic back and it just shoots you off into the distance. So it's like, whoa, okay, that's pretty good. Now, in terms of driving it, like, you know, to be fair, like he was saying, as a petrol car, as a hybrid car, it just drives like the petrol car. Apart from, you can sense that the gearbox is a CVT, when you drive it like this. Drive it normally and you'll never know the difference. But when you drive it like this, you will know that's a CVT. But otherwise, you won't know the difference between this car and the petrol car. It really doesn't feel much different at all. Um, there's no extra weight to worry about. You know, the handling is just as good. The ride is still very smooth. Sound deadening, no problem. AC you can use. Really, there is absolutely no issue. Um, and that is to say that, you know, the Camry is a decent car um, to blat around in. Very good for intercity cruising and generally quite good around town as well. And they really have not detected any difference between this and the long-term car, uh, the petrol version that I ran, you know, just a, a couple of months ago. So quite frankly, even in my red shirt and supposedly being the green car skeptic, 
and the anti-hybrid car Alter Ego, I have to say, I can't really give you a reason not to get this car. You know, if you were going to get the 2.5 litre Camry, you might as well spend a bit more, save the environment, save yourself some pocket change if you do a lot of mileage per year. If you do a lot of mileage per year, you will definitely see a significant saving on your fuel bill. Um, but if you're only doing like 10,000 or so, you may not see the difference as compared to considering that you're paying more for this car brand new. But if you are doing a lot of miles per year, 25,000 plus, you will probably see uh, a benefit to that. Work out the figures. But anyway, for, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, it's good. I've got to concede it. Nothing wrong here. You know what? It's been really handy having those clones around. I've often thought I needed a little bit of help having to do all of this uh, stuff by myself. Really helps to have two ex additional versions of myself. Anyway, I've put them back in their box now and taken it over uh, to do the wrap up. So there you go. There's our review from two different perspectives, or three if you're counting me, uh, of the new 2018 Toyota Camry Hybrid. I think pretty much it's a thumbs up all around from all three of us actually. So uh, there you go, it's a good car. If you do, like, like my alter ego was saying, if you do a lot of miles per year, and then you can spread to, uh, uh, stretch to the extra amount and pay for this car, you'll not only be saving a little bit of money on the fuel, but you'll be doing the environment a massive favor. Hope you enjoyed the review. Do let us know what you thought of the car, the review of me and my counterparts. <laughs> <laughs> and do of course follow us on motoringme.com on all the usual social media that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and if you're on YouTube then please make sure that you like, share and subscribe and you know what, whilst you're at it follow me on Instagram as well it'd be great to see you there thanks so much for watching until the next one